Okay, we're back here inside the Cube at v, uh, EMC World 2012. We are in Las Vegas where all the action is happening around this year's kickoff of EMC World 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is our exclusive coverage of the Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, tell the smartest people we can find, and uh, whether they're CEOs, entrepreneurs, uh, customers, whoever, we want to extract the signal from the noise and share that with you in a very independent way. So I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with B.J. Jenkins, who's the president of EMC's BRS division. Uh, B.J., welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. I keep breaking the smartest people in the uh, conference <laughs> premise, but I, I'm, I'm thankful you invited me back. He's not Definitely. Humble, he's a Red Sox fan, folks. And, uh, Good. So, Everybody's got crosses to bear in life. I, I've, got a, I've got a bunch of them. You would have liked our interview at Sapphire last week with Reggie Jackson. He uh, was there, and we actually had him on talk about the 78 series against the, uh, the Dodgers. It was kind of a fun, uh, normal break would, from the action. I would have been crying every time <laughs> well, I see so, Reggie. Yeah. I, I was too, but so John actually asked him about the hip check play, you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and he went into it, he gave about a five or seven minute uh, dissertation on it. It was, it was kind of a good, fun That's segment. That's beautiful, That's yeah. good. Hey, so it's uh, your second EMC world now, I guess, as uh, president of the BRS yep. division. Right? Unfortunately, I couldn't make it last year on this interview. I had you know, an analyst go, thing going on with Tucci, but, uh, yep. so I missed that. But um, So how you doing, how you feel? I mean, you must be excited about the, the growth and the market share, but uh, give us an update on what's new and what's changed. Yeah, the... Um you know, the business has been great for uh, our BRS division that focuses on protecting customers' data. Uh, we formed in 2009 when we bought Data Domain. We brought, you know, the Avamar networker and DPA assets in and try and give customers end-to-end -end data protection. You know, I think the drivers for our business, uh, you know, the trends are right in our favor. You've got customers dealing with extreme data growth that never goes away. I think you hear it at every EMC world. Uh, on top of that, their budgets continue to, you know, say stagnant or not meet that growth. And uh, then you throw on, you know, what you hear here, cloud and big data, they've got these new challenges they got to deal with. Go to full virtualization or, you know, build a private cloud internally or go to a public cloud and uh, all of those things stack up. And then you may want to just throw regulation, compliance and governance <laughs> in on <laughs> top of it. Yeah. And we have customers just going, you know, I, I, I can't protect my data. And, and uh, the technologies we're bringing to them, you know, give them that efficiency and cost reduction on the backup side. But most importantly, you don't make any sacrifices in the keeping your job part of it, which is recovering when you have an issue. And in fact, you know, some of the announcements today, you know, specifically around Avamar, help you recover up to 30 times faster uh, in VMware environments. So, you know, we're, we're excited about what we're doing for customers. Um, they have huge challenges in these BJ, areas. So, so let's talk about that. So obviously the world, backup and recovery has been around for a long time. You guys had the acquisitions you mentioned. Data Domain, Avamar, and Legato, we're going way yeah. back. So you got some, <laughs> some assets in there with software and some hardware. But the infrastructure is changing. We've been talking about the modernization of the data center, modernization of the infrastructure. EMC's got the big cloud meets big data, which is IT and service providers, and then big data for the business transformation. And then the whole people message around data science. But, but job and labor markets, interesting, is changing. But with virtualization, all this is kind of really turning everything upside down. Right. So, What's your vision around these challenges and the complexities? What are you seeing out there around these new challenges and complexities? And what what's what have you guys done and what are you guys delivering? Well, I think you know complexity is the key word there for an IT user with all of these new things building on top of them. What we try and drive back into them is um, a set of tools that can solve some of these new challenges. Uh, what we're trying to do for them is simplify and integrate our portfolio to make it easier to deal with some of those uh, complexities they have. So if you can have a uh, device that helps you, you know, in uh, virtual environments, in physical environments, in an i-series environment, because people still have i-series in a mainframe, right? It's, can you find a, a set of tools that can help you simplify what you're trying to do around data protection and backup. So that's one of the ways, no matter you know, what the, the challenge that IT person has, we want to make it easier for them to protect their data. You know, within that though, they have to start somewhere. 
And that sometimes is the problem because you have a business process and you have sometimes you have to break it to get to the solution. And so whether it's just start with simple tape replace or you know you need to give your DBAs a little more control over protecting their databases. Okay, we inter we integrate with uh, Arman. You know we can let you use your native Arman tools or your native Microsoft tools and protect your data. You give the user some control, yeah. and you give IT control. It's a it's a so a thread. Marriage. So there's two threads that we're that Dave uh, put out this morning that we're going to be pivoting on this week is the, the role of the labor market within the IT organization. What skills? Two questions. What skill sets do you see that are evolving that are that are augmenting the existing uh, data protection and recovery side of the business? And the second question is, what is the role of big data analytics in the notion of advanced security? So those are two hot okay. areas right now. Can you talk about that? Yeah. I, I think when you talk about data protection and the skills around it and people's concerns, I would tell you when we meet with you know, a backup administrator, their concern was my job's going away. The storage administrator wants to control protection, I've got a VMware administrator, I've got a DBA who says I suck and get me out of there. And our vision and our belief is that you actually need all, all of these working in harmony, you need to give them a set of tools that allow the user flexibility to work in their native environments. vCenter, uh, RMAN like we talked about, so the user can actually offload some of the challenges that the IT group has, but then also give the IT group central control to help, so you don't have you know, the inmates running the asylum, you have all these users you know, doing their own thing. And, and th this is what our tools can do. You can run, the users can run natively and we'll continue to integrate and work openly with them, but then we'll also give the IT department tools to you know, manage uh, the entire backup process, get efficiency out of it, report on it, and bring uh, you know, efficiency and standardization there also. So you know, we, the, 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 the job market there and the skills needed is definitely evolving. You have to, as a IT person, be much more in tune to those end user tools and the end user requirements, and hopefully we're giving them a set of tools to do that and evolve. On the big data side and the security side, you know, big data for us is opportunity for protection for customers, and we announced today, you know, support uh, DD Boost for Greenplum. Um, what we didn't announce today, but what we have an agreement uh, that just came out is Teradata now supports uh, data domain. So we're traditionally in their large warehouses, it was tape, and then when you had recovery, it was awful. Now you have data domain and Teradata environments and you can do fast backup with efficiency and recovery. So big data for us is just opportunity to help those customers protect that data. Uh, the security side is challenging uh, when you think about deduplication because you know, we need data in its native format to do that efficiency. We can't have it encrypted or uh, you know, changed. Uh, but what we do do is help you as you're replicating over WANs or data at rest, uh, encrypt that, and then we're integrated with our RSA key manager, and, and we're trying to give, again, those customers native tools, security tools they can use to make sure uh, that their data is protected in a backup environment. You know, BJ, I want to share some data with you. So we just did, Wikibon, we just did a large survey around IT transformation, and um, we asked them, what's their single, uh, these are IT practitioners, what's the single biggest challenge you have in 2012 from an you know, IT challenge? And the, f the four or five things that came up, one is budget constraints, you mentioned that. Two was data growth, you mentioned that. Three was data protection. Four was the inability to respond to the business. You talked about recovery and doing some things to prove recovery. And the, four, the fifth was security. I, I see the, 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 the targets for your portfolio right at those four or five items. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about, when you go back to the data domain acquisition, I thought, I didn't understand it, I thought it was a purely defensive mechanism to keep it out of the hands of NetApp. Um, now, maybe it was, but it appears to me that it's much more than that. It's driving your business, propelling your business. It's now, I mean, you know, multi-billion dollar business over the cumulative life of that asset. So, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Did you know that? Was that the plan that it was going to be actually not only a defensive play, but, but an opportunistic play, a growth play for EMC? I, I think there were a couple things at play when we made the acquisition. Obviously, given the timing of the NetApp offer, there, I, I think it's fair to say there was some defensiveness in wanting to keep that asset off out of their hands. Um, I, I think very quickly once we got the asset in-house, we already had a lot of experience. We'd been in backup for you know, 
15, 16 years going back to a product called EDM that, that EMC had. Right. And what we found out quickly was that customers want end-to-end -end data protection. They want a single approach. It isn't about just putting a uh, repository, a storage, de efficient storage device in. It's actually um, how from the backup application or from when you make that point in time, I've got to protect my data, till the integrity that it's at rest, it is somewhere and I know how to get it, that is what customers were struggling with. And that drove growth, huge growth for us. So I think the simple thing is people would look at it and say it was defensive against NetApp and then it was distribution. We just wanted to get it into EMC's distribution channel. Um, and on the surface, those look like good explanations. I think underneath it are these customer drivers that you're talking about right here that uh, data growth, budget concerns, uh, you know, security, data protection, that all came together when we brought um, Avamar uh, network or data domain together. And, and if you remember back to when we did that acquisition, I think the speculation was this will kill Avamar. There was always the, hey, they both do deduplication. I never data, speculated that. By data the way. domain. I, I never know. felt that. I, 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 but but <laughs> I, I don't think anybody knew exactly what was going to happen. But when we, the, I would tell you, the first week when Frank and I sat down, uh, because there were arguments at the time to you know, bring archiving in and, and it was no, uh, data protection backup is a focus area for customers that is a huge challenge. And there are multiple use cases that these products solve independently. We know we got to bring them together, but we can reach the market with I, both I, of them. I have to say, I did think some of your early messaging was somewhat confusing. It might have implied yeah. that, but I, I never felt because of the VMware play that yeah. Avamar was you know, a good fit for that. Um, and so, but now, you mentioned end-to-end, -end, and your detractors would say, yeah, that's right, end-to-end -end is, is required, but the, the naysayers would say that you can't get to end-to-end because -end you got too many stovepipes, you got Avamar, different technology from data domain, then you've got you know, your, your software, right. the networker software, and, and it's just this multi-flavored um, you know, portfolio. <laughs> Great, that you can solve any problem at any point, but how do you achieve the end-to-end? -end? How do you respond to that? So I think there, there's a, um, you know, the proof is in what we deliver. We, we talk about a vision with a single backup application, and for fun right now, we'll call it AvaWorker, or Netamar, or something <laughs> Netamar, like that. Yeah. And then, you know, a single repository, which is, is data domain. And, and, and the proof, I guess, I would give people that were down this road is, you know, every EMC world and, and in, at points in between, we've announced, you know, Boost for Networker, Boost for Avamar. You will see in the second half of the year more enhancements for Avamar to write to data domain, uh, more data types of data sets. Uh, our client teams, where we used to have an Avamar and the networker client team, there's one client team now. We're building a single data management and catalog framework, and all of this comes out piece by piece in the releases. It takes time to do. Um, and, but we're on that path, and detractors could certainly look at it and, and punch holes at it, but we tend to focus on the customers, and they give us good feedback. We're down the path. The one thing on top of that, when I say end to end, that I think is absolutely critical though, it's uh, services up front, in assessing environments and designing environments, and just as importantly, it's uh, service on the back. And um, you know, we are a one throat to choke when you deploy all those tools. You one call, you got software, you got hardware, we fix it. It's an EMC, you know, uh, you know, either. Uh, a validated partner or an EMC person coming in. We own those problems end to end. And uh, you know, I think that's what differentiates ourselves. When I yep. look at software only providers, you know, who say, hey, you know, you're paying too much, you can use dumb disk, one of the things I talk about is how do you know what they write to that disk is actually there? What if you have a drive failure? What if you have uh, corruption? Um, how how yeah. do you deal that deal with that? Well, we deal with it with data domain and vulnerability architecture. We confirm with every software application that what you wrote is there. And you've got reporting infrastructure right. around it. And, you know, we love the services play. We yeah. we think that's actually EMC's secret weapon. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to the heritage of the company. Um, so the other piece I wanted to mention is you know the proof is in the numbers. Yeah. I mean, the IDC numbers just came out again. Yeah. Your market share held a little bit, actually might have even increased a little bit. I mean, 66% of the revenue share yeah. in the purpose-built backup appliance market, which is unbelievable. Um, is that sustainable? 
Um, we believe so. I, I think we have to execute on our roadmap, and, and our goal is to, to uh, you know, continue to perform the way we've performed. I think there's certainly, um, the competition in this market has certainly increased. You know, Symantec is certainly trying to make moves here, and, um, you know, I would say, you know, Quantum is making moves and trying to, you know, use price as a tool in certain instances. So the competition has increased, but you know, we feel differentiators like Boost and what we're doing with end-to-end -end services uh, allow us hopefully to keep performing like that. The other thing I miss, BJ, and I wonder if you could comment on it, is I underestimated the total available market for disk-based backup, because I assumed it's the tape market. Right. Um, and the mistake that I think I made was, so let's say tape's what, two to three billion, it's clear that the, the purpose-built backup appliance market's going to be larger than that. Yeah. Um, and I presume what I missed is that nobody wanted to pay money for tape. There's, there, were, there were use cases that were very limited and you've maybe found some new ones, whether it's replication or other types of archiving. Talk about that a little bit. Why is the market for disk-based backup actually larger than what one would presume would be the market yeah. for tape? Well, yeah, to start, I would say, um, you know, tape's a good place to focus. In fact, in the keynote today, one of the things we'll tell the crowd is, uh, you know, through our conversations and estimates, we have over a thousand customers who are tapeless in backup today. Uh, so, you know, this for us, we feel there's huge momentum. Tapeless there. in backup, so they might still be using tape for, for archive, archive okay, some, but not And for I want to go after that too, by the <laughs> way, but they're tapeless in backup, we'll which take is it one, time. Of, one of our goals. Um, and then you're right, there's this whole, I would just call it incremental, right? It's um, how do I have um, a more thorough DR strategy uh, for my applications and data sets using a really efficient backup product. So traditionally we would just think, okay, they do an on-site backup and then, you know, three years ago they'd offload to tape and tape would be their DR and they'd send it to a facility. Now they look at it and say, I, you know, I've got either a service provider or I've got my own secondary center. You know what? I'll just replicate that smaller set of data to the secondary center and do I have enough to protect myself? And in many cases we see them doing multi-site replication mm -hmm. back and forth. Well, you've just tripled, you know, the amount of available market for you there in doing something like that. So I think that is definitely out there. And then I think the really the the growth of unstructured data has been an and to our market. Um, you know, whether that be just be growth and, you know, um, uh, you know, general purpose NAS in an organization, directories, it's, it's grown, I think, much faster than we anticipated. DJ, I mean, so Dave and I love to talk on the cube, and we like to handicap the horses on the track and talk about, and we, you know, we, we you know, obviously share our opinion, but we also like to speculate on the market segmentation around growth areas. So obviously you guys have market leadership and in backup and recovery going way back. But really, let's talk about the customer perspective. So when we talk to customers, this is like almost like a feature area that was a feature you got to have as part of your business, you know, stovepipe or silo. But you mentioned competitors, com competitors coming in with other solutions. Talk about the reaction you get from customers when you have to roll out the differentiation package to these customers. For example, if someone says, hey, we're, we're less expensive than EMC, and they throw out some FUD around that. Um, it sounds good on paper, but you guys are nested in these companies, right? So there's a really nested position where there's some critical operations now being discussed. You mentioned compliance. Talk about those factors. You just can't unplug backup and recovery. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to switch. So talk about right. the switching costs involved in going with another solution. And then talk about the the uh, consequences of that relative to say compliance, multi-tenancy in the cloud, things of that nature, security. Yep. I mean, it's not it's not trivial. It's not like right. popping out a box. One of the interesting things, you know, we've seen as the division has grown, and it's it's kind of a reverse what you would normally think, is usually software is the sticky thing and the hardware is the interchangeable part. What we found with backup, which has been very interesting for us, is uh, once we got data domain installed, we actually, Networker has started growing in, in double digits again for us. And it's done that because most of the time we're selling it into data domain environments. And this is this notion of I want end to end, I want a single service approach from a, from a customer. So now I think that's the today story, right? I, the tomorrow story and the reason why if you're going to handicap, I want to you know, I want you to put your money with us, is it's really going to be about integrating uh, even more closely 
not just with VMware and Microsoft, it's gonna be with primary storage, okay? The game is gonna be how do I eliminate some of the uh, backup infrastructure, note media servers, uh, the proliferation of media servers out there, wouldn't it be great if I could just snap from a uh, VMAX or a VNX or use Recover Point to move data seamlessly from uh, a primary device to a uh, data domain device. What if Fast had another tier that was just sitting yeah. right there, which was optimized storage? To me, that's the game changer. I think EMC is the only one who can really go. go Almost like a time machine that. for the enterprise. Yes, right? yes. So yeah, we think that's you know where we're going to go. If you're going to put money, hopefully you're going to put it on <laughs> us. So we'll keep delivering for okay, you. Okay, BJ Jenkins with that EMC. I mean, this is an area that uh, is not talked about in the mainstream press, but it's really critical infrastructure. It's changing. It's evolving. It's complex. It's nested. And uh, thanks for your perspective. And it's a hot area with cloud and big data. It's only going to be more important <laughs> with compliance, etc. So BJ, thanks for coming on the cube. We'll be right Thanks. back at this break with our next guest.